Hi everyone, Redneck Computer Geek here, and today we're going to be working on doing a bunch of tune-up work on this. We're going to be doing coils in this video, and I also have a compendium of other stuff I'm going to be doing on this. So we'll be doing the carburetor in another video. The carburetor works on this, except for it seems to have a random fuel issue. So I'm going to just plain replace it, and we'll do that in a different video. Now, in order to be able to do coils on one of these Briggs & Stratton twins, you're going to need to order a coil pack, which I'll have down in the link below, along with stuff for everything else. And it's a really good idea to do spark plugs. These are knockoffs, but we've got this one set out in order to talk about testing the motor before we go any further. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a 5 16 socket. You're going to need a 3 8 socket. And you're going to need to start off by going around and removing one, two, three, four off of the top. And then one, two, three, four, five, six off of the side. And then the whole top will end up coming off. Now, the set of coils that's on here right now, they actually do run. But if you saw this in the previous video, it had one of the worst mouse nests that I have ever seen in it, which is why we'll be replacing a bunch of stuff to get this up and running correctly. So now we give this a yank, and it should pop off. But of course, where I'm in video, it's going to decide to be a twit. There we go. So, as it sits right now, the reason why we're replacing these coils is because I'm going to be putting this in another machine in order to be able to sell it, and I don't want any headaches coming back. So, coils and the uh, carburetor are cheap investments to make sure you don't deal with irritated people. As you can see, I liquid rubbered this where the mouse chewed through it and was able to get it up and running, but... That's not a solution, that's a band-aid. Now, let's talk about five seconds how to check and see if you have a dead coil. The first thing you want to do is you want to disconnect your wiring harness. You've got your kill wire right here, and you're going to disconnect this harness so that that way the coil kill, this wire right here, is not activated. So at this point, this, no matter what, should make a spark if this turns. What you do is pull your spark plug boot off, grab another spark plug, pull that spark plug out, and hold that spark plug right up against something that grounds that is a clean surface. And you need something that will ground out and is clean with a known good spark plug. That way you can check and you can see if you actually have spark when you turn this over. Now, if you turn this over and you don't get any spark and you have disconnected that coil kill from the harness right here, the other thing you want to do is double check that that coil kill wire did not get chewed up. See, it goes across there and over to there. Make sure it did not get chewed up by anything. It didn't catch the flywheel and it's not grounding to the block because that'll kill your coil as well. So at this point, we need new coils. Let's go ahead and replace them. So we got a 5 16th here. We've got a really low torque impact, and we're just going to go and softly give it a few ugga duggas. And these are prone to snapping, so do not be harsh with them. Just some light ugga duggas. And there we go. We can breathe a sigh of relief. Now these are proprietary. This is the only place that they fit, so do not lose those. And we'll compare the old coil to the new coil once we disconnect the kill wire. Now unfortunately it's hard to get this one on camera, but if I try to flip it, you can see right there is the coil kill. And we're just going to go back and forth, back and forth. 
And do not be surprised whatsoever if this connection breaks off. If it does, just smash on a new connection and call it good. So there is, get these going the right direction here. There we go. There is our old one and our new one. There we are. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is get this kill wire connected. That's the biggest pain to go and deal with right there. And trying to do it on camera, but I guess it's just not going to work out. So you guys can just trust that I got it there. There we go. And then we're going to get this pulled over and lined up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of paper. I like paper that's got kind of a waxy surface to it or something like that because it makes it easier to push through the flywheel. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it till we have the magnet facing it. There we go. Now we're going to pull it back, put our paper in. Come on. And then set that up against the piece of waxy paper. That will set our distance. And now we can go ahead and screw these in. And like I said before, these are prone to snapping, prone to stripping, so finger start them to make sure they love to cross thread. So get them both in, check your spacing, then just give them a couple of light taps. There we go. Now we take this and we rotate it while pulling on the on the paper. And now rotate it and make sure that it doesn't catch anywhere. See, that flywheel caught right there. And if I had tried to start that motor up, I would have destroyed my brand spanking new coil. So I need to space it out a little bit further because the flywheel is not true. So we're going to undo it. And space it again. Helps if you remember to put the magnet where it's supposed to be. So there we go. We got that paper folded over in order to space it out just a little bit. And unfortunately, as the flywheels get older, they get more rusty, stuff like that, you run into this problem a lot more often. Okay, rotate that and pull the paper. There we go. And now we'll rotate this. See? 
clears perfectly now. Take our spark plug wire, loop it around, and click it down on the plug, and call it a day. There we go. Now we'll do the other side. Almost messed up there. I almost ended up trying to go and do that with the Ooga Dooga. Even a light inch pound Ooga Dooga, when you've got these small screws, can cross thread and rip stuff out. Always make sure to hand start these. On a side note, if you do really mess up one of these and you strip it out, you can re-tap it for a quarter 20 bolt. It takes a little bit of reaming as far as getting the coil mount to work. But in an emergency, that's what you can do. So let's rotate that and get the paper out. There we go. And bring this around and click it on. Set that in where it goes. And at this point, we should be able to start this thing up. We'll even keep it rolling so that you can see that I drained the carburetor and it's going to take a sec to fire. So, set the choke. Right now it should be on low throttle. And let's hit it with some voltage. Probably got an air pocket. We'll just kick it over one more. Turn my booster pack on. There we go. Now I gotta make you guys a video on doing that carburetor. Have a good day!